Hello. In the last video in this series, I showed how to create an indicator that placed a dashboard in a separate window on the screen, like the dashboard shown here. I also said at the time that this would only work with an indicator because experts can't create this separate window. So today I'm going to show how we can set up an expert to show information in a separate window like this. This is the indicator we built last time and it creates that separate window by using this property indicator separate window that's available to all indicators. That is not available to expert advisors and I have an expert advisor here which I've imaginatively called dashboard example. Even if I add that property statement and this will compile, that will still not create a separate window. Um, let me just go back to the chart and I'll load up this expert just to demonstrate. Back to the chart here, I'll just switch to a new tab and I'll load up the dashboard example expert. Here it is starting. So the exports, the expert is running now, but it has not created a separate window. So that's what we're trying to fix today. Back to the code and the answer is fairly simple. We just need to create an indicator that creates, that sets up that blank window. So I've already built one here. I'm using the property indicator separate window. Uh, I am taking an input of panel name and I'll explain what that's for later. And then I'm setting the indicator short name to that panel name that you supply in the input. And you can see here in the on calculate, this indicator does nothing. So all this will do is create that window on screen. Let me go back to the chart and load this indicator up and you can just see that window appear. Back on the chart now and I'll just load up that dashboard panel indicator. There it is. Okay, and it's created an empty window for me. So now let's see how we can get the expert advisor to put information into that window. There are a number of reasons why you may want to display information from an expert advisor rather than from an indicator. You might be wanting to display the input parameters for the expert, time since last trade, time to the next trade, anything. So here back in the code, I'm looking at the expert advisor that I'm using, the dashboard example. This will just display some basic price information on screen. I didn't create this to do any trading, but it's just to display how we can use that dashboard panel. And remembering that in the dashboard panel indicator that I created here, I'm taking an input of panel name and it names that window on the screen according to this input. Now, there is one basic technique for displaying information from the expert in that panel that I'm going to use, but there are some variations. So I'll start with the first variation. I've added an input to the expert of the dashboard panel. I'm defaulting that to null. I'll just change that so I don't have to type it later. And then all I need to do from the expert is find a window with that name. So if I move down the code here, when I create my C dashboard V3, which we saw in the last video, I'm giving it a unique name of the expert name and I'm passing in the name of that dashboard panel. And remember that this name will then be used by the class C dashboard V3 to find the window that holds that dashboard panel. Uh, and these are then the position settings for the information. And then I just call update dashboard and all I'm doing is displaying current time, the build number of, or the build information of this expert and then the bid and ask prices in other columns. Let me compile that, that worked. And then we'll go across to the chart and I'll load the expert up and you'll be able to see this expert showing information in that second panel. Back on the chart, I still have the indicator running that has the separate dashboard panel. And now I'm going to load up that expert again. Uh, you can see I've got the default value for the input being the name dashboard panel, which matches the name the indicator is using. I just say OK, and you can see that now it is displaying information in this second panel. So that was simple. Um, it works. I'm going to show a second technique now that I think is actually easier to use. Now I've just made a change to that expert because I want to demonstrate it working first and then we'll go to the code and see what I've done. 
And all I'm going to do this time, instead of double clicking to open up the expert, I'm going to drag it into that second window. And I've removed the default value for the panel name because I don't want to have a value there. I click OK and now you can see that it is displaying inside this window. Remove the expert. Add it back by double clicking this time and I'll put in and that also works. So let's look at the code to see what I've done. So back in the code and I removed the default value for the input dashboard panel because I want to be able to run the expert without supplying that name. And then down to the code, I've left the old line of code here. You can see what I'm doing now, I'm checking if no name is supplied in that input dashboard panel, then I am detecting window on dropped. This function will tell me which of the window numbers the expert was started in. And you remember I dragged and dropped the expert onto the screen this time rather than double clicking it. And also remember that the C dashboard V3 has two constructors. One constructor takes the name, input dashboard panel, and the other constructor takes the number of the window. So here I'm going straight to the number of the window constructor. So all I'm saying is if I did not supply a name to the expert to display the dashboard, then it will display the dashboard in the window where it has been dropped. If I do display a name, then it will do exactly as it did earlier. And something else that I have added here, if the sub window of the dashboard is less than one, so the main chart is always number zero. So what I'm saying is if I've dragged it onto window zero, then I'm simply not going to display anything and this will just do the return statement. So this is all I needed to do to be able to drag and drop the expert into that second panel and to show it in the panel either by providing a name of a panel or just dropping onto the panel. And here I have created a specific indicator just to create a blank space, but you could drop this onto any indicator, although the code is the uh, the texture display is likely to get in the way of the indicator in that panel. Now I want to show you some variations that can cause problems and then how we can work around some of those. Now back on the chart, I've added three indicate, indicators that use separate panels. I've added the MACD, then my dashboard panel, and then a momentum indicator. I'm going to drag the expert into the dashboard panel. And that's all working fine so far. But now if I go to my indicator list and remove MACD, for example, you can see that the output from the expert has moved into the momentum window. This is because when I loaded this, the dashboard panel was window number two. Now I've removed window number one, which was the MACD. So dashboard panel has now become window number one and the momentum is window number two and the expert is still displaying the information here. Let me show another example of that. I'll just reload the template. Drag the dashboard back in. If I now remove the dashboard panel, so go back to the indicator list. And again, the output has moved into the momentum window. So let me go to the code again and I'll show you some things that I can add to the code to try to fix that problem. Now back to the code, before I explain in detail what I've done, uh, let me point out something I may have gone over a little quickly earlier. In the on chart event event in the expert, I am calling init dashboard. This handles things like changing the size of that second window and adding new windows. So rather than try to adjust the dashboard that's there, I'm just restarting. So this is calling the init dashboard every time I resize or open and close a window. Now. What I've done in here, and I've left the earlier code here commented out so that we can do a comparison. First, I've added this static string panel name. So I'm holding a value in there. And I'm saying that if the panel name is blank, then I'm checking to see if there was an input value, which if I'm doing the drag and drop, I'm not providing an input value to this input dashboard panel. 
But if there is a value there, then, or if it is null, if there is no value there, then I'm picking up the window ID from the window where the expert was dropped, as before. Then I'm setting the panel name to the name of that window. So I'm actually getting the name from the window now and saving it because panel name is a static, so I'll be saving that value. And I've just added a little print statement here to show where it was dropped so we can see that when it runs. If the input dashboard panel name was supplied, so if this is false, then we'll go through this else statement and the panel name will just be set to the input dashboard panel. So after that, I'm just using panel name to create the output where previously I was using imp dashboard panel. Now I'm just using panel name. And apart from that, these two statements are the same. And of course, using panel name here. So by doing that, if I delete one of the windows on screen, then when I, when I go back through the init dashboard, there's already a value for panel name and the expert will look for a panel of the same name. And if I have deleted a panel before the display panel, then it will find the new panel, pick up a new window ID in this statement. Uh, yeah, pick up a new window ID by using this constructor. And if I happen to have deleted the panel for the display, then it should display nothing. So let me go to the chart and dis and we'll run this. Now I'm back on the chart. I've cleaned everything and reset it again. Let me drag, drag my dashboard expert, leaving the value blank. And it's displaying information inside this panel. Like last time, I'll delete the MACD indicator. And now the expert is still displaying information inside this same dashboard panel. Let me reset. I'll drag the dashboard in again. And this time I'm going to delete the dashboard panel itself. And now the expert isn't displaying anything. Now let me try one other thing just to show. I'm going to add the dashboard panel back in again. Same name. So now it will appear at the bottom of the screen. And again, the expert is now beginning to display inside this dashboard panel. So that's to get around the problems that might be caused if you accidentally delete the panel or if you add or remove other indicators from the screen. That's all I have for this video. As usual, I will put all of this code onto the Orchard Forex website for you to download. There'll be a link in the description below the video where you can find that. In the next video, I will show how you can run the expert on one server and display the dashboard on your client computer, which is very useful if you're running an expert on a VPS. I hope you're finding these sessions useful. If you are, please leave a like and remember to click the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified when we post new videos. Until next time, thank you for watching.